guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm filming my August anti-haul video. I film these every month just for funsies because I like to keep up and keep track of all the new makeup releases that I am actually not planning on buying. So if you enjoy this type of video, just keep watching. If you are new to my channel, I just want to say hey, welcome. My name is Karen Harris. I upload every other day so you do get quite a bit of content from me. And my main focus here on YouTube is tan girl friendly makeup. When I first started YouTube, I had such a hard time finding reviews and swatches from people with my skin tone. So I decided to take matters into my own hands and create my channel. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, definitely subscribe for more content. So I have a long list. I wrote it all down on my handy dandy planner. In case you guys are wondering what this planner is, because I love a good planner, and I know so many people talk about different planners, but I really like this one. This is my Simplified Planner. I have a link for $10 off a planner down in my description box. It's my second one, and I already purchased my one for 2021. I'm so excited. They just launched these on September 2nd, and there's like six designs, I think, and they're so cute. So. I just wanted to let you guys know in case you're wondering. So the first thing I'm anti-hauling is the Kylie Summer Sailor Collection. So this kind of came out a little bit later in the year than what I would think is typical for a summer collection. Obviously with Voldemort around, things are kind of slow, but then some brands are keeping up. I don't know how it's all working out, but definitely looked like this was going to be like a 4th of July theme in my mind, but it's cute. It's really cute. I used to purchase from Kylie here and there when she first launched. I feel like there was so much hype for the brand and I still remember like the burgundy palette and the bronze palette and the lip kits and all that stuff. So I definitely was more interested in her brand when it originally launched. I feel like now I just like to observe from the sidelines and mostly roll my eyes every time I see something new. I think the packaging is cute, but not for me. There was lip kits, there was a shadow stick or two, glosses, eyeshadow palette for $44, and then the bundle was $115. So it is a no for me. <laughs> the next thing I am anti-hauling is the ColourPop and Candyland eyeshadow palette and collection collaboration that they did. This one was so hyped and people were really like so excited, which I think it's valid. Like I never played Candyland growing up, but when I moved to the States to go to college, we definitely played it at the dorm. So I am very familiar with Candyland and we even played life-size Candyland once and that was super fun. So if you're looking for something to do with your kids while you're trapped inside your house, that might be something to consider. But anyway, I really like the game and idea behind this palette and collection. But honestly, I feel like the more I see ColourPop's collections this year, I feel like they're really geared towards people that really like light eyeshadows. I think that lighter eyeshadow colors are an acquired taste. They're definitely not for me, but there's people out there that love them. I personally could not make this color story work. It's like a bunch of light colors and then one dark brown, which I'm like wondering what that's supposed to be for. Um, I do love that they launched like some major 90s throwbacks, like the lip gloss with the ball in it. Oh my gosh, that product immediately reminds me of my mom because my whole life growing up, that was her lip gloss. She would use one of those ball lip glosses and um, up until probably 10, 15 years ago, she was always looking for them because I think they basically stopped making them. So I think that's cool. I would love to see ColourPop do like more of those. Yeah, so basically that's it. I think it was a very nostalgic collection, but not for me. So easy pass on that. Okay, so number three on my list of things to anti-haul is the KKW BFF collection. Now, I feel like this collection has been roasted in all the Will I Bite and anti-haul videos I've seen, mostly with people going like, who the heck is this person that Kim collabed with? I have no idea. Like, listen, I'm like a low-key like follower of the Kardashians. Definitely don't like follow them as much as probably most of their fans do, but I have no idea who this woman is, so 
I don't really get that whole vibe, but I think it's just another, you know, basic neutral palette and some beautiful complexion products. I can definitely see people getting into this and if you collect her stuff, which I kind of used to collect her eyeshadow palettes, I stopped doing that in 2020, yay me. I think you'd be into this. I think it looks really fun, but definitely not for me. The next thing I'm anti-hauling, this one I low-key really wanted to try, but then I thought of all the bronzers I purchased this summer and I decided, Karen, you know what? You don't need another cream bronzer. So Soul Body, which is a sister brand of ColourPop, launched some bronzing bombs and they look so beautiful. They really reminded me of the Chanel Tan Decision, Tan whatever that $50 cream bronzer that Chanel makes in one shade, and the Huda Beauty um, Tan Tour. I think they have like cream, like contour shades. Um, these ones definitely look more bronzy, so I was very tempted. I think you could get them um, individually for $15 and then ColourPop also had like a bundle available and I definitely added it to cart, but I decided to pass on it because I am very determined to stay off of ColourPop's website this year and I've definitely fallen twice just twice, so I'm not too mad at myself, but I wanna keep up and just take a break from them because I'm focusing on purchasing from indie brands. Okay, so the next thing I'm anti-hauling is the new Chantecaille collection. This is their fall collection, and I believe the proceeds from the collection do help support uh, the conservation of elephants. Um, I believe African elephants, if I'm not mistaken, uh, but <laughs> there's a $75 eyeshadow palette and then uh, three $48 lip balms, and I've heard nothing but good things about Chantikai. This particular collection just didn't appeal to me. I'm really not into, like, bougie eyeshadow palettes because I feel like they are not my favorite kind of eyeshadow formula. I really like my eyeshadow formulas to be very pigmented and blendable. And I feel like with higher end formulas, you're getting more of a light wash of color. At least that's the vibe I got from my friend Britt Clark's video. So this one is a very easy pass for me. The next thing I'm anti-hauling are the Cover FX Monochromatic Lip Colors. There's six shades. And the cool thing about this collection is the six shades correspond with their blushes that everybody loves, those um, monochromatic like duos that they came out with. So I kind of love the idea of a blush and a matching lippy. If you guys haven't seen my video on Rare Beauty, a lot of you were com com a lot of you were commenting about how my blush and my lipstick shade match. So that Cover FX collection made me think of that. So if you're into that vibe, I would say you know get your favorite Cover FX liquid lipstick to go with your favorite blush. Personally, I didn't like the blushes and I have more liquid lipsticks than, I don't know. <laughs> I have more liquid lipsticks that I know what to do with, so it's an easy pass for me. Okay, the next thing I'm anti-hauling is this collection from Wet n Wild, and I'm not gonna lie, the Just Brutiful really called to me because there's like a little brew cat on the palette and uh, I have three cats in case you didn't know so I'm a cat fan and it never seems like there's enough animal themed makeup products coming out so this one definitely caught my attention but it is another neutral palette and I don't need it so passing on it but those retail for $8.99 and then they also came out with a few glosses for $2.99 and then they also came out with a palette called Ice Cream B and this one has a beautiful like duochrome shade on the top row that really caught my attention but again I just need to remind myself there's literally a pile of palettes over there that I still haven't played with on my channel so I really need to be picky and for that reason these are an easy pass. The next thing I meant to Holly, I feel like I cheated because a lot of the stuff is really easy for me to say no to. Um, the NARS Climax collection there's a $59 eyeshadow palette and a $24 mascara. I believe they've launched the Climax mascara before, but the eyeshadow palette is new and it is limited edition. I am such a fan of NARS products. I have not bought an eyeshadow palette in a while though. I used to be so, so into their eyeshadow palettes. I had a duo from them that I hit pan on. I know it's shocking. I can't remember what it was called. But honestly, I haven't heard good things about NARS eyeshadow in a while and I'm definitely not interested in another neutral palette. So 
easy pass for me on this one. Okay, so the next collection I'm anti-hauling is the ColourPop Sunflower Collection. Now, I love sunflowers. We actually have sunflowers growing in our garden um, because every summer we plant sunflowers and I'm such a big fan, but I don't know. It's an all matte palette. I was trying to think in my head when the last time ColourPop did an all matte palette was or if they've ever done one. So if you guys can think of that, let me know because I really can't remember when they did a all matte palette. Um, so it's cute because I mean, I guess it's not like boring neutral. <laughs> so that's a plus. But oh man, for sunflowers, I feel like you had to like they could have given us like a grungy green and then like a more vibrant green like i would have really really loved that because you guys know i love greens a shimmer green would have been nice a grungy i don't know i was thinking more like gemini palette meets like a yellow palette would have been a cool concept so easy pass on that so the eyeshadow palette was $14 and it's called Little Ray of Sunshine. They also had some gel eyeliners that they launched and then Super Shock Shadow Duo and then some glosses as well. All an easy pass for me. Okay, the next thing I'm into hauling is the Supernova Collection from Lights Lacquer. I am a big Lights Lacquer fan. I'm actually wearing one of our shades on my nails today. I haven't painted my nails in forever, but I was so excited when she was coming out with like a little mini collection, and then I saw they were all purples, and they did look like they were a little bit special, but it really didn't call to me, so easy pass on that. They were $9.50 a piece, and then I think they also had a bundle, but I'm really hoping for some really cool fall shades. I really like some of the shades in her summer collection, but her shipping is kind of pricey And then I didn't want to commit to the whole bundle because she also had some like jelly formulas Which I'm not as big a fan of so I did hold off on her on buying her summer collection So I'm really hoping she does like a really bomb fall or like Christmas collection. That would be great Okay, so the next thing I'm anti-hauling is another easy one. This is the BH Cosmetics Chilling in Chicago. So they've been doing these travel palettes and I do own quite a few of them. They have been very successful, I believe, for BH Cosmetics. And I feel like everyone from Chicago would have totally been on board for this palette if it had been a more exciting palette. But maybe also if you're not like a beauty YouTuber or you don't watch a lot of beauty YouTube, maybe this is like right up your alley. It could be, I guess, now that I think about it because I had one of the neutral travel palettes. I think it was like Hawaii or something. And I gave it to a friend for her birthday last year and she literally sent me a picture of it. She had pit pan on like all of the shadows. So maybe I'm just not the target customer for this palette, but personally, having been to Chicago, I was pretty underwhelmed by the palette. It is a very big city. I think it would have been fun to see some silvers because there's so much like architecture there. And of course the bean is in Chicago. So I think it would be nice for them to sneak in some silvers and some really bomb metallics as a nod to that. But yeah, easy pass. It was $16 for the eyeshadow palette and $18 for the accompanying brush set. Okay guys, so obviously change of scenery over here, but uh, I apparently lost the rest of my footage for my August anti-haul. I'm gonna blame it on the fact that it took me forever to get around to editing this video, so hopefully you guys don't mind. I know this video is like a month late, but you guys love anti-hauls and guess what? I still have my notes from when I filmed it. So I was like, you know what? The show will still go on and you guys will still get a September anti-haul video as well because I like that series. And honestly, if nobody watches this video, I'd be okay, but at least I know that I filmed my anti-haul. So we left off at BH Chillin' in Chicago and we are on to Olimar Cosmetics. Spanglish collection. Now, Olimar has been available at some Target stores as well as a Target website, and they did launch a Spanglish collection. I like the look of the palette, but honestly, it's nothing revolutionary for me. My friend Amy Loves Makeup loves Olimar Cosmetics. It's probably one of her favorite brands, and I'm yet to figure out why, but guess what? I trust Amy, so if she loves it, there's probably something really special about it. I did purchase the original two Olimar palettes and I wasn't that blown away by them. So I won't be trying the brand anytime soon or trying anything new from the brand anytime soon. But it's definitely a brand I am planning on keeping an eye on in the future. Maybe they'll come out with something that really catches my attention. 
but for now it is a pass for me. The next thing I want to talk about is the new Charlotte Tilbury Pillow Talk Push-Up Mascara. Now, I haven't really tried any mascaras from Charlotte Tilbury. I do love the packaging of this particular mascara, but that's about it. I have quite a few mascaras open right now in my collection and I don't usually favor high-end mascaras. I'm definitely more of a drugstore mascara kind of girl, so easy pass on that as well. The next thing I wrote down is the Peachy Queen We're All Mad Here eyeshadow palette for $33.95. This one is inspired by Alice in Wonderland. I believe it's the Cheshire Cat and it's a cute palette but nobody I watch on YouTube reviews Peachy Queen and I'm so curious about the brand but it seems like they're one of those brands that's always coming out with private labeled eyeshadow palettes and there's nothing really wrong with private labeling but I feel like it's more so quantity more than quality so I really wonder about purchasing from them but, but I always manage to talk myself out of it because it feels like they're coming out with so much and I'm not very inspired to pick anything up from them so if you guys have tried Peachy Queen and they're actually good I would love to hear what your thoughts are in the comment section. The next brand I'm anti-hauling is the Hit Dot collab with Faced by Kareem and it is a brush set for $14 and a palette for $26. This is a very neutral palette and I want to try Hip Dot. I think some of you said that they're actually pretty good, so I'm very, very curious to try them out eventually. Maybe they'll have a good Black Friday sale or something will come along, but for now it's an easy pass as well. I did see very recently that they're on the Alta website, their Spongebob collection, so Maybe that means we'll see more of them on there, which will make it way easier for me to buy from them because if I don't like it, I can at least return it to Ulta. Okay, the next thing we're anti-hauling for August is the Jeffree Star palette. <laughs> I don't know why I turned into a little 13-year-old boy when I talk about that palette, but the name is definitely a little bit cringy. Um, I haven't seen anyone talk about this palette, probably because I don't really follow too many people that talk about the brand. I'm very picky about who I watch on YouTube these days, mostly because I don't have a lot of time. So it's again all about quality, not so much quantity for me. But you know, I don't doubt that it's a decent palette, but uh, I have so many neutral palettes I love. I recently did a video featuring top 10 favorite neutral eyeshadow palettes. So if you haven't seen that yet, I would highly recommend. I'll try and remember to link it for you guys. Otherwise, just search it in my channel. It was a collab with my friend Kara C. So with all those neutral palettes, I really couldn't justify picking this one up. And honestly, I really haven't enjoyed Jeffree Star's formula in a long, long time. <laughs> so easy pass on that for me as well. The next thing I'm passing on is the Morphe Main Event Artistry Palette. This is $29. I'm not gonna lie, the color story kind of got me. It looks so grungy and just like very fall-esque. But then I realized that the last row is actually the cake liners. And as much as I don't have any feelings toward cake liners, I really don't need an eyeshadow palette that also has cake liners. Plus I just got the Midas cake liner palette. so. I'm all set for cake liners. I have the Suva cake liners. Like I have cake liners coming out of all sorts of places. So again, easy pass for me, but I do like the color story. Don't really like pressed glitters in a palette. So overall easy pass. Okay, next thing I'm anti-hauling are some products that launched from Fenty Beauty. So they launched three shades of lip balm and two eyeshadow palettes. They did a green and a wine shade and a Stunna lip paint in the shade Underdog. I really don't want to pay $18 for a lip balm. The green and wine eyeshadow palettes definitely caught my eye, but I feel like the first eight palettes did not get overall very good reviews. So I really felt no inclination to try the two new ones. And then I don't really like the liquid lipstick formula from Fenty Fenty Beauty. So all of that was an easy pass for me. The next thing I'm anti-hauling is some very expensive stuff from Charlotte Tilbury. She launched the Walk of No Shame um, jewel pot as well as a jewel lip. The eyeshadow pot is $35 and the lip was $32. Honestly, those price points are way out of my makeup budget. So another easy pass for me. Next, we're on to the Bite Beauty, the Millennial Pinks mini set. Now, they usually do one of these mini sets around the holiday time. I'm surprised it's coming out a little bit early this year. I personally don't love the Bite Beauty lipstick formula. I've never been a huge fan. I remember so many of the big YouTubers raving about Bite Beauty when they originally launched and especially their lip balm, that like one that came in like the toothpaste tube almost. But yeah, I've just never been into them. So 
This one is an easy pass and it's a $39 set. So if you are a huge Bright Beauty fan, maybe this caught your eye, let me know. I personally haven't seen anyone review it or talk about it either. Next thing I'm passing on is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Lip Stains. These are $18 and she came out with six shades. Honestly, this looks really fun. There's a shade called Rosewood that's really catching my attention, but I have so many lip products. I definitely don't need to pick any more up at this moment in time. I would love to hear your thoughts on the lip stains. I have seen people say that they are really tough to get off, so the name lip stain is definitely fitting which I think is nice. I mean, you get bang for your buck, especially if you like to wear your makeup through a full work day or you like to, you know, have makeup on when you go to dinner and stuff like that. It's nice to know that it'll probably last through a meal and hopefully wear really flatteringly. I'm sure you guys, as well as I, have experienced when you wear like a bullet lip to dinner and then you get lipstick like all over your face and then you're looking at your husband going like, why didn't you tell me I had lipstick on my chin? Because that's definitely happened to me. So I definitely would prefer to go with something like a stain or a gloss or a liquid lip, something that like clings on, you know? So I think there's definitely a place for this in the world, just not in my makeup collection. The next thing I'm passing on is the Dominique Cosmetics Beautiful mess collection. These are her liquid eyeshadows and there's two multi-chromes. I think like a couple of mattes and a couple of shimmers. They all look really fun but $20 is definitely more than what I'm willing to pay for a liquid eyeshadow. I recently bought the Natasha Denona Chromium in the shade Scarab and I really really like that but I don't plan on buying any more liquid eyeshadows anytime soon. The next thing I'm into hauling is the ColourPop Garden Variety Collection. Now this collection is so beautiful, the packaging really sucked me in. I was like almost doing a double take and I'm like maybe I can just get it. Like it's so cute, the packaging's so cute and it has a beautiful green. Listen, I'm a pop of green bitch. You could have the most boring eyeshadow palette and then you throw a little pop of green in there and I'm like oh give me that palette. And so I had to like have a little you know, moment to myself and be like, Karen, like really think about this. Do you really want this palette? Is it really gonna look that different from all the other Colourpop palettes you have that you don't use? And I successfully talked myself out of it, but I do think it's a beautiful palette. I just wish that Colourpop would like really commit to a garden palette and give us more punchy greens. Like I know I have the all green monochromatic palette, I just want more greens. I want more greens from them in a palette called Garden Variety. So I ended up passing on this one real fast. The next thing I'm anti holly is the Laura Lee Los Angeles brush set for $45. Honestly, this brush set kind of looked like it was made at wherever Morphe brushes are made and then they fell off the truck and Laura Lee picked up a few of them and she's like, I know, I'm gonna sell eyeshadow brush kits. <laughs> like, I don't know, they just look so cheap. I mean, 45 bucks for a whole brush set isn't really that much money, but you can buy like a really good brush set from like BK Beauty for like $100 or Sigma or Wayne Goss or Sonia G. So then why spend that $45? I would rather save it and put it towards something that I know is high quality and that is going to be long lasting. So sorry, Laura Lee, Los Angeles, you are not getting my money. The next thing is the item beauty brand. This was started by a TikToker. I don't really know which one. I thought maybe it would get more hype in my corner of the internet. I know there's so many beauty channels, so I can only speak for the few that I watch. So I definitely thought I would see more people talking about this brand. But honestly, I haven't seen anyone talk about it and it could just be my age. Like I'm not really at that age where all the TikTokers hang out. So Maybe there's somebody out there making a YouTube video about item beauty, but I haven't seen any. If you guys have heard anything good about the brand, I would love to hear your thoughts, or if you've tried the brand yourself, I would love to know. But for now, it's a pass for me. Okay, the next thing we're anti-hauling is the Pure Defense Anti-Pollution Collection for $34. I'm sure Pure is one of those brands that had a bunch of stuff planned for the year, and then Voldemort happened and everything went to shit. I get that they probably had this launch plan, but it was so weird because the Pure and Christie launch happened and it was such a shit show. And then they gave us this like anti-pollution palette and I'm like, I don't give a flying about the anti-pollution palette. Restock the Christie palette. It's like, what are you doing? <laughs> Nobody cares. <laughs> so I feel a little bit bad because it's not really Pure's fault that they had all these collections that they needed to push out, but I don't think anyone is checking for this 
anti-pollution collection. <laughs> I saw it's still available on Ulta, so I'm guessing sales are going not that good for them. So the next thing I'm anti-hauling is the Urban Decay All Nighter in the Ultra Glow for $33. So if you guys haven't been living under a rock, you all probably know what the Urban Decay All Nighter is. It's like the most famous setting spray that they, you know, basically hand out at Ulta or Sephora. If you've ever gone in there looking for a setting spray, that's the one they always recommend. Personally, I don't love it as much as everyone else seems to here on the internet. I am not very picky when it comes to setting sprays, but I feel like MAC Fix Plus has always just been my ride or die when it comes to setting sprays. There have been a few here and there that I've tried and have been good, but I feel like MAC Fix Plus is um, the one to beat for me. I have no inclination to try the Ultra Glow, but if you've tried it, let me know what your thoughts are. I'd be curious to hear, but yeah, I would, I would rather save the money, to be honest. Okay, so the Stay Naked Face and Lip Tints for $26, also from Urban Decay. These came in seven shades, and they looked really interesting. They kind of look like those new Jouer blushes that launch as well, but... I honestly didn't see any PR for these or anything like that, which makes me wonder, like, are they even good? Like, why isn't Urban Decay pumping these out to the public? Because I feel like they're a very on-trend product. I feel like multi-purpose cream products are so in vogue right now. But the fact that I haven't heard anyone say anything about these makes me not want to try them either. I'm not going to spend my money trying something when... Urban Decay should be sending it out to booty gurus to review so we can assess if they're any good. So easy pass on that for me as well. The next thing I want to talk about is Ayla Luz Luxury Mindful Beauty brand. This is a brand launched by a very, very famous like beauty blogger. I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but she's super, super famous. I think she's Brazilian and she's got a lip balm and a lip and cheek tint. When I did my research for these videos, I feel like these products were not very affordable and I feel like a lip balm and a lip and cheek tint, it's not really gonna capture the hearts and the minds of people that watch YouTube as much as I do. I feel like if you're gonna catch my attention, it has to be quite a big collection or it's gotta be some kind of palette that really like blows my mind. So when I see a lip and cheek tint or a lip balm, I'm like, eh, you know, I already have that stuff and it's not something I'm gonna spend an arm and a leg on, so easy pass for me. And the last thing I'm anti-hauling is the Morphe 35C Everyday Chic Artistry Palette for $25. This one was an easy pass as well. I mean, don't get me wrong, I used to buy all the Morphe 35 palettes back in the day as well, so I'm sure some of you out there are still continuing on with that tradition, or you're newer to makeup, and Morphe seems like a great deal, but honestly, this palette, I can't say it's the worst 35 palette I've seen, but it's definitely not my favorite. I feel like there's a few palettes mixed in here. This could have definitely been edited down to like a nice 15 pan palette or a great nine pan palette, they could have definitely done something. But I will say in Morphe's defense, they are definitely trying more layouts. So there is hope. They've been experimenting with a lot of nine pan, 18 pan palettes. So I do appreciate that about it. <laughs> but yeah, easy pass on this palette from me. Okay guys, that is everything for this anti-haul for the month of August. Yes, this is my second time filming it. <sighs> I'm exhausted. I really hope I don't have to film this a third time. I might I might just scrap the video at that point. So everybody say a little prayer, hold your breath. If we've made it to the end, it's probably okay. If you're watching this on YouTube, we've made it. We've made it, we have succeeded. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. I know this video is kind of late. I will work harder to get September's video up in a timely manner. Thank you guys so much for all your support and I will see you in my next video soon. Bye guys.